Kawasaki's very popular middleweight Tourer that sits among the top in the class, the Versus 650. Up against Suzuki's very well equipped and capable offering that is challenging it for the throne, the V-Strom 650 XT. These are two of the most popular middleweight adventure tourer bikes on the market right now, and for good reason. Designed to be able to tackle mile after mile both on and off-road and cover some real distance. Hi, how's it going? I'm Quackerjack and welcome to another episode of the Versus series. Today we have Kawasaki and Suzuki going head to head in a direct specs comparison to compare the styling, claimed engine and power specs, exhaust sounds, weight, suspension and brakes, fuel economy, features and price. But before we get into that, make sure to leave a like on the video and hit subscribe if you haven't already to join our great community of moto lovers. Alright, let's get straight into it. Let's first have a look at the styling of both bikes. I'll throw up some photos of each now so you can decide which one you prefer. Even though both of these bikes are classed as adventure bikes, I think the V-Strom is the more traditionally styled off-road adventure bike out of the two, with the bigger front wheel, wire spokes and front guard. Comparing it to the Kawasaki, which is sort of more like a road bike on stilts. When it comes to styling, it is completely personal opinion, and for me, I prefer the Suzuki. But what do you think looks better? Now to the engines. Both of these guys are rocking 650cc motors, but they do have different setups and come in restricted power models, so I'll include those numbers too. On the Kawasaki, you have a traditional 649cc liquid-cooled parallel twin engine that is taken from the Ninja 650. On the unrestricted model, it produces 69 horsepower at 8,500 RPM and 64 newton meters of torque at 7,000. And on the restricted or LAMS model, which is the only available version from Kawasaki here in Australia, that is reduced to 55.3 horsepower and 55 newton meters of torque. The Versus is supposed to be a torquey little thing, and that should make it a hoot to ride around town and will absolutely have no problems with the highway. It also has a claimed 0 to 100 km time of just 5.28 seconds. With the Suzuki, you'll be getting a 645cc 90 degree liquid cooled V twin engine that produces 70 horsepower at 8,800 RPM and 62 newton meters of torque at 6,500. On the restricted LAMS model, that is toned down to just 47 horsepower. Unlike the Kawasaki, the V Strom is available to buy in both restricted and unrestricted models here in Australia, but does have a very similar 0 to 100 time of just 5.1 seconds. So, as for engines and power, these guys are pretty neck and neck with the V-Strom making one more horsepower than the Versus, but having two less torque. It is interesting to note though, that if you were getting the restricted versions, the Kawasaki would have the higher power output. Really though, I doubt you'd notice a whole lot of difference between the two when it comes to performance on the regular models. And if you're looking at these sorts of bikes, I don't think it will really be your top priority to have every last ounce of power. Let's also have a quick listen to the stock exhausts of both bikes. Moving on to weight, and again these two are identical, both having a wet weight of 216 kilograms. I think for what these bikes are designed to do, which is mostly cover long distances on mainly the highway, that is a good number. It should mean that these guys are very stable and not bullied by gusts of wind and passing cars on the motorway, but also still be able to be maneuvered quite easily and be nimbler than their larger counterparts. On to arguably the most important aspect of these two, which is the suspension and brakes. Both bikes are designed to be mile munchers, doing long distance traveling and carrying lots of gear. Both are also used to go off road for more adventurous treks, and while they can both do it, one is more specifically designed for the purpose of going off tarmac. The Kawasaki Versus 650 up front is rocking a 41mm inverted telescopic fork with adjustable rebound damping and preload, and an offset laydown single shock with remote spring preload adjustability at the back. The seat height of the bike is quite high at 840mm and the wheel travel is 150mm at the front and 145 at the back. You've also got 170mm of ground clearance. As for brakes, there are dual 300mm semi-floating pedal discs with dual two-piston calipers at the front and a single 250mm pedal disc with single piston caliper at the back. The bike also comes with ABS as standard. Now, Kawasaki claims that the Versus 650 wasn't specifically designed for off-road travelling. But you'll find that a lot of the owners actually do use it for that purpose. 
by modifying it with off-road tires and adjusting the suspension. Where the Cowie really excels though is on the highway. With that really tall seat height, you're going to get a really smooth ride on the highway that is very comfortable over long distances. Reviewers also claim it to be a real blast in the twisties too, with the 17 inch wheels helping to make it feel sporty and agile. That means that when you come across a great twisty road on your touring adventure, you can still really enjoy it. Now, as for the Suzuki, at the front, it has got a non-adjustable 43mm telescopic fork and a link type rear shock with adjustable rebound damping and spring preload at the back. The seat height of the V-Strom sits at 830mm and the wheel travel at the front is 150mm and 160 at the back, along with 170mm of ground clearance. As for brakes, you have dual 320mm floating discs bitten by Tokiko twin piston calipers up front and a Nissan single piston caliper on a 260mm disc at the back. This bike also comes with ABS as well. So as for which handles and brakes better, it is of course down to personal opinion. However, it does seem that the V-Strom is designed more for both on and off-road use. That's also helped thanks to the fact that it has a 19 inch wheel at the front and a 17 at the back, compared to the Versus which is just rocking 17s on both. The Kawasaki was really designed for highway touring and excels there, whereas the V-Strom is the more traditionally designed adventure bike. Now we come to another important aspect of any bike that's going to be used for long distance travel, and that's fuel economy. You don't want to have to be fueling up every 200 kilometers or so if you're going for a big trek. And thankfully, these two bikes are very accommodating and well endowed in the fuel tank department. The Versus has a 21 liter fuel tank as standard and a claimed usage of around 22 and a half kilometers per liter. That means that the bike has an estimated range of around 470 kilometers from a tank, which for a bike is really rather impressive. The V-Strom also has a large tank, but is slightly smaller at 20 liters, but it has an average fuel consumption of 24.67 kilometers per liter. This gives the bike an estimated range of 493 kilometers. Obviously, real world usage is going to vary and different sorts of riding will produce different numbers, but the Kawasaki does have the slightly larger fuel tank, while the V-Strom has the slightly better fuel economy. In this department, I'm going to give it to the Suzuki because it's got the slightly higher range. On to features. The Kawasaki is known to be a workhorse, blue collar sort of bike, a bike of the people, and it shows in the features that come stock, with the notable ones being ABS, an easy adjust large windscreen, adjustable long travel suspension, comfortable seat and passenger grab handles, that large fuel tank, rubber mounts to reduce vibration, and an analog style tack and multi-function LCD screen. It is not the fanciest bike in the lot, but it is dependable. The V-Strom is also well equipped, with its features being two mode traction control, wire spoked wheels, LED tail light, 12 volt DC outlet as standard, comfortable seat, tall windscreen, large fuel tank, hand guards, under engine cowling, ABS, easy start system, low RPM assist, an analog tack and LCD multifunction displays. Both bikes have a heap of extras that you can purchase to really deck it out and turn it into the bike you want. But for the stock bike, the Suzuki does have more features than the Kawasaki, and you will be paying for those extra features too. When we come to the price, the Kawasaki has the edge over the Suzuki. In my area here in Australia, the Kawasaki Versus 650 has a right away price of 12,151 Australian, which is a fair amount cheaper than the Suzuki. The V-Strom 650 XT has a right away price of 13,490 for either the Lambs or full powered model. That means that you'll be paying an extra 1,339 Australian for the Suzuki over the Kawasaki. And for that amount, you could get a few really great extras for the Kawi. Obviously, if you're in Australia and you're after the fully powered version, you'll have to go with the Suzuki. In the price department, the Kawasaki takes the win. Even though both bikes, in my opinion, do offer a really good amount of value for money. They both have a really usable amount of power, which is enough for highway riding and to be able to enjoy yourself on a windy road. They both have a fair few features and would make great adventure motorcycles. It really comes down to what kind of riding you're going to be doing. If you're doing off-road riding, the Suzuki is going to be the better bike. If you're doing mostly highway riding, then the Kawi is probably the better option. So there you have it, the Kawasaki Versus 650 against the Suzuki V-Strom 650 XT. Which one do you prefer? Thanks again for watching guys and make sure to find us on Instagram at quackerjack underscore for heaps more. Till next time, see ya.